Hello, this is Chris Covey with the League of Women Voters of Portland. You are watching the Video Voters Guide. Along with Metro East Community Media, we are here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Cynthia Castro, running for Portland City Commissioner, Position 2. Welcome, Cynthia, and please tell us a little bit about yourself, why you're running for Portland City Council, and what unique characteristics you have among all the candidates for position two. Um, I grew up in the Northwest, Pacific Northwest and have a background as a researcher investigating minority health disparities and poverty alleviation. Um, I earned a ma master's in public health from Oregon State University, where I also coached the Beavers women's cross country and track and field programs. Um, and for the last six years, I proudly served our community as a Portland Parks and Recreation employee, most recently as the director of the Charles Jordan Community Center as well as a senior policy advisor for Commissioner Amanda Frick. Um, my husband, Dave, supports cancer research within OHSU's Knight Cancer Institute, and we have two kids uh, enrolled in Portland Public Schools. Um, one reason why I'm running is because I want to ensure that all Portlanders have their basic needs met, including stable housing, economic security, clean air, and clean water. Um, as a former Portland Parks and Recreation employee, I also want to build on Commissioner Nick Fish's work to ensure that our parks and recreation system has a, a long-term sustainable financial model so that future generations of Portlanders can continue to enjoy it. Um, I believe that Portland is made up of many unique neighborhoods. Um, and one of the things that I want to advocate for is to make sure that no matter where you live in the city, you have the same level ex of expectations from your city service, from your city government. Same um, and unique characteristics. Um, so I think one thing that, that helps me stand out is just my, my qualifications. So I live in Southwest Portland, and through my experience with the city of Portland, I've had the opportunity to work in East Portland, as well as work in North Portland and downtown. So I've been close to the issues that our communities face on the front line. Um, in addition, um, I'm somebody who's known as a collaborator, which I think is really important in our structured, especially important in our structured form of government. Well, let me ask you this, uh, Cynthia, the pandemic uh, that we're experiencing now and the re resulting devastation of small businesses, city employee layoffs, and housing displacement will be with us for some time. As a commissioner, how would you seek to address this fallout, including the reduction in city revenue? Sure. So I believe that the city has made some great first steps in trying to support our community, but we can't do it alone. We definitely need state and federal support. Um, I'm a city of Portland employee, and I know that we've already um, made some very difficult decisions within our institution uh, by laying off hundreds of seasonal part-time employees um, earlier in the pandemic. And just today, um, we received an email that our non-represented employees are being asked to take 10 furlough days. Um, so again, I know that um, our city is already having to make very difficult decisions. Um, we're expecting a $100 million revenue loss, um, and that is um, I anticipate that as the longer that this pandemic goes on, the, the greater that that revenue loss is going to end up being. So as a commissioner, I'm going to join my fellow council members um, and employees in, again, having to really take a hard look at our operations, look at the uh, organization of our bureaus, um, look at our essential services. I think it's really important that no matter what we do, that we're not cutting back on uh, important services for our most vulnerable com communities. And that as we're looking at continued employee layoff or employee, sorry, um, impacts, then we're not just centering on um, those on the front line. Turning to another subject, if we maintain our current government structure for the city of Portland, what city bureau would you want to oversee and why? Um, as a former Portland Parks and Recreation employee, that bureau um, is very special to me. Um, I'm personally invested in it. Um, and the position that I'm running for uh, was Commissioner Nick Fish's, and in his portfolio was Portland Parks and Recreation, as well as the Bureau of Environmental Services. So I would be bringing in with me um, a lot of background with that bureau. Um, when I first started with Portland Parks and Recreation, I oversaw our bureau strategic plan. I helped raise a million dollars to preserve green space in the Coley neighborhood. Um, I also helped provide increased services to at-risk youth. And then again, as the director of the Charles Jordan Community Center, I oversaw eight union represented employees, a seasonal workforce of over 50 employees, um, a bit budget over a million dollars, and a number of community partnerships to support community members of all ages and income levels. 
So I feel like I have um, a lot of experience and knowledge with that bureau. And, um, you know, they're also navigating very difficult times again right now with the pandemic, with loss of revenue due to recreation facility closures, um, and again, more employee layoffs. Turning from structured issues, how would you address the public's concerns about police community relations, the use of deadly force, and officer accountability? Mm -hmm. As commissioner, um, you know, I'm running in the special election, so uh, we're looking at the May 19th primary. If there's a runoff, it'll be in August. Um, so I would be stepping in um, as we're still looking at police uh, contract renegotiations. So I believe that that is one opportunity that we have to make some changes um, that will result in greater police, that could result in greater police accountability, as well as community oversight. Um, in addition, I've also taken upon myself, um, while I was a uh, senior policy advisor for Commissioner Fritz, to also get out in the community because there are some great efforts that are happening to try to bridge communities um, and police. Uh, for instance, I went to an event downtown that was hosted by the Youth Educating Police uh, group, which is youth driven, and really it was about bringing police, youth, and families together towards greater understanding. So, we just need more of those efforts as well. A last question for you one uh, you mentioned a little bit before. The city's park system faced serious financial challenges, even more so since the closures caused by the pandemic. What ideas do you have for securing the financial stability of our park system? Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, um, I, I would be building off the work that's hard, ar, that was already started by Commissioner Nick Fish. In the fall, he and Parks Director Adina Long um, had a work session in front of council to present different options um, for our parks and recreation system. So it is, do we move forward as status um, as current practice right now, or a status quo, which could result in continued closure facilities? Do we sustain level service that we have now, uh, just maintain, or do we really look at um, positioning our award-winning parks and recreation system to be able to have to implement best practices and asset management to be able to reduce cost of programming for our community members? So I, I personally think it's really an opportunity that we need to seize because of how important the Bureau is to our community. Um, for myself, at, with a public health background, I see the public health benefits of that bureau. I look at climate action and I think about the urban, the tree canopy um, and the protective properties that it provides us, for instance, um, as well as the community building opportunities and the economic benefits. So I think that for us, we really are positioned to be able to set our, our bureau up, our, our parks and recreation system up for long term. Um, so I would be building off of that work. Um, they did present different options, different types of taxes and bonds. Um, and I know that the, the city is investigating those options and looking at, you know, who would be burdened and really at the end of the day, what kind of uh, funding would be generated with, through these different sources. Okay. Thank you, Cynthia, for your thoughts. This has been the Video Voters Guide. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and the ballot measures and exercise your right to vote. Thank you for watching.